Hey YouTube family, GN Subs, giving you an update on the Keeping Family Together Act litigation that's going on uh, with the parole in place. Uh, we're also gonna give you a really good tip on what to do when there is an investigation in your marriage case and there's derogatory information that immigration hasn't given to you. I'm gonna tell you my trick, how I win a lot of these family marriage cases uh, using the law that I will provide you. And a uh, couple more updates with regard to the new form of advanced parole, et cetera. I'm gonna get to all of that today. Uh, my name is Umberto Argray, attorney at law. Uh, I give good news, that's what I do. I have an unbelievable library uh, that you can click on and get free information. You can search for whatever issue you'd like. There are frequently asked questions. If you give me a comment, I will answer it. I answer every single comment, sometime thousands at a time. I take my time, I go through them and I give you, I do the best I can. I give you the information because you are my good news subscribers. I really appreciate what you do and um, I hope you love the content. So if you're new to the channel, hey, let's get at it. A lot of good information. All right, update on keeping family together, Zach, parole in place. This is a very important announcement uh, by Biden uh, that allows those who are married to US citizens apply for parole in place if they are unlawful. If they enter the United States illegally and are married to a U.S. citizen, this is a game changer, folks. Not only will it avoid you filing uh, for a waiver and departing the U.S. and potentially having problems at the U.S. consulate abroad, but also it allows you to get your green card here in the U.S. You can file an adjustment of status. After you've received the parole in place, you are considered legal in the U.S. It's a game changer, folks. So this has been in litigation since the passage of June of 2024. And currently there was a hearing on October 4th, okay? And what happened at that hearing on October 4th was a bit of good news, right? A little pyrrhic victory uh, for us uh, that you can continue to file your parole in place applications until November 8th, 2024. That is the latest. If you can file Follow your application. Uh, USCIS can't approve these applications currently, but they're going to sit pending. We have plenty of them filed. And uh, I'm betting, as I told you before, we're going to have good news, folks. That is going through. Why? Because this is an act of Congress. Congress passed the authority to parole uh, individuals into the United States. And so this is congressional action. It is not like DACA that is merely uh, in action by the president, the executive branch. So I think it's gonna be good folks, get it in. All right, next bit of good news. I'm gonna share with you some important information on family cases, folks, all right? This is when there is derogatory information that immigration is relying on in a notice of intent to deny a marriage case, in a notice of intent to revoke a marriage case in an I-130 petition that has been denied, right? So what happens is in the course of your adjustment of status, right? If they want to find fraud, what they do is years later, they do an investigation, right? They go to the neighbor's house. They come to a, a, a former address where you lived uh, years ago and they conduct this investigation. Um, they obtain uh, derogatory information and then they use it in a decision against you, a, a notice of intent to deny or a notice of intent to revoke, and you cannot take USCIS for its word, okay? So what I've done is I've given you the law and I've given you a link in the description box below where you can actually request supervisory review and you can request a copy of the investigation. What you're gonna find is that in this investigation, it's totally different than what USCIS is saying, and that can result in winning your case, folks. I do it all the time, right? So get the investigation and the notice of intent to deny, you will indicate, look, I can't respond to this notice of intent to deny without the derogatory information and the law at 8 CFR here and a matter of Zerezgi and USCIS policy manual. This law says that you must provide this to me, so please provide it to me. If they don't, then you have a great case on appeal and you can ask the BIA to, to reverse the case de novo and win the case. I've done it many times, so that's a good trick uh, that I give to you on those family cases, all right? See if you can utilize that. 
All right, next bit of good news, November Visa Bulletin, November 2024. I put a link in the description box that takes you to November 2024. It is the same as October for all family cases and all employment-based cases. You are going to use the filing chart, not the final action date chart, but the filing chart. The dates are more current uh, than on the final action. As you can see, uh, go to the Visa Bulletin. I have a great video on the Visa Bulletin. You might want to go check it out so you can understand uh, the ins and outs of the Visa Bulletin and how it's utilized. All right, finally, starting October 11th, the I-131 form. What is that? That is your travel document form. It used to be called the Advanced Parole. They have a new edition of this form that is June 17th, 2024. You must use the new form or your case will be rejected. The application is now called the Travel Document, Parole Document, Arrival Departure Record. So, um, they've put a lot of additional information in these forms, and these forms can be used for a variety of different reasons. I will do a video on this. I think this is going to be very important. I'm going to flush it out for you uh, in the future and let you know. All right, YouTube family and GN subs, thanks so much for watching Gray Law TV. Click below, like, and subscribe. Become a GN subscriber. I bring good news. I bring important news. I bring relevant news. I break it down. I make it very easy for you to understand. And uh, hey, we'll see you next time.